If you're winning, you're going to affect people's emotions. Let's face it, most people care what everyone thinks about them. Most people want everyone to like them. But what if I told you your job isn't about everyone liking you? It's about beating the guys that everyone thought were untouchable. This is the story of a team that some of you loved, but others couldn't stand. This is the story about one of the most influential tennis duos in history. And if you got a problem with me saying that, well, <laughs> get comfortable, bitch. I needed a challenge. I needed something that would task me physically. Baseball, football, basketball, they just weren't enough. I knew I needed to focus my energy elsewhere. I knew I needed something different. I needed tennis. But why tennis? How far did you think tennis was going to take you? You know, I heard that question a lot. They asked me that many times. They said, you'll never make it far. You'll never go D1. And I said the same thing every time. Scottie Pippen didn't even go D1. And that's what my inspiration was. When people ask me who my inspiration was for my tennis career, I think back to one of the most influential painters in history, Vincent Van Gogh. When people told him, you won't be a good painter, you only have one ear, he said, I can't hear you. Ace? Yeah? Do you know where the fish food is? It's in the garage, I'll grab it. All right. You'll never guess what I just found. What is it now? Oh, you're gonna wanna see this, I'll tell you what. Read it and weep. Huh. Look at this stuff. Yo, oh, I remember that play. What a ride we had. I can't believe it was all those years ago. God. <laughs> so, Tennis the Menace and Ace Ventura. What did you guys bring to the game of tennis? You know, we really revolutionized the game, I think, and that's what drew a lot of people to the games, you know, really got a lot of support out there. We brought a new demeanor to the court, something people hadn't seen, you know, something new. You could say that again. That's so tennis. <laughs> okay, um, so what, what, do you, what got you guys started in tennis? Well, niggas gotta eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh... So guys, did you kind of view yourselves as a more of a villainous duo on the tennis courts? Well, I think most people in the community saw us as heroes, a type of Venus and Serena Williams combo, a little thunder and lightning, huh? I couldn't agree more with that one, Menace. Okay, sounds good. Next question. <laughs> so guys, what were the months of preparation like before your crazy successful and incredible 2014 Boys Tennis Season? Oh, this. Those months were grueling. Um, we'd start after school. Once we decided to play, sprint down to the weight room. We'd lift till 2.59. We'd sprint up there to make it in time for to be 15 minutes early for practice so we could get there and warm up and do our running before that. And that was done each day. So you can imagine the physical toll it took by the time the season came, but that was something we were prepared for. And I'm, I'm happy we did it, but those months, those months were grueling. After that, we would even hop in the pool for a little aerobic exercises. Most nights, we even skipped dinner. I guess you could say we saved our eating for the tennis courts. <laughs> yes. Am I right? Yes, you are. <laughs> we would spend three hours just practicing our serves nonstop and then cool down with a little three mile Indian run, which was. <laughs> when Tom Santilli walked into my doors on May 20th, I knew I saw the most severe case of tennis elbow I've seen in years. And I told him, I said, Tom, if you play this team, there's a 95% chance you lose your arm. Now, Tom, how'd that, how'd that news make you feel? I said, Doc, our game's in 11 days. You got to let me play. 
You gotta let me play, Doc. We're playing the number two team in the fucking state. It's alright, it's alright. No, man, it ain't alright. I can tell the rest of the story for Tom. Well, at this point, he grabbed me by my throat and threw me against the wall. And he said, Who the fuck are you to tell me I can't play? There's one thing we always say. The, the film don't lie. lie. Remember this game. Didn't play some of our best tennis, but we left it all out there. I think this really shows what our season was all about. Just all the hard work and dedication put into this one match. Very disappointing coming home with a loss, but I think we really made a statement throughout the entire state of Connecticut. There is no question in my mind. We showed some inexperience, but overall, we left our hearts out there. We really did. So while there's bad times, there's always some good times. We look back to defeating the number seven team in the nation, Greenwich. That was just a huge win for us. They said we couldn't do it. They said, you don't know what it's all about. You don't know what tennis is. And we showed them. We showed them all. And our fans went nuts that day. We gained a lot of fans. To the people who say we're thugs and goons, I say kiss my entire asshole. These guys do for the world of sports. All these guys really revolutionized that game. You really can't speak enough to what they did, I'll tell you what. You really can't even put it into words. These guys were unbelievable. You want to know more about these guys, you gotta get the facts. I'll tell you what, you gotta get the facts. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! What do you think of when you think community service? That's, uh, Pruding and Tantilly. I know those guys. Those guys are in my shop all the time. You know, they're popular faces. Their faces of the game. Whenever they were in my shop, people would flock and I'd get a hell of a lot of business. McEnroe, Federer, Nadal. These are all common household tennis names. But the names you don't hear are Pruding and Santilli. They are unsung heroes, legends of the game, and inspirations for generations to come.